Today's guest, Roy Collin, is a serial entrepreneur and the creator and host of five podcasts. I bring these guests to you to encourage you to understand that anything is possible. Let's hope this podcast helps you realize your dream of not only starting a podcast, but help you become better at delivering your message through podcasting by sharing tips, tools, and strategies that you can use. If you find this podcast helpful, please subscribe to our YouTube channel at Tools of the Podcast Trade. Follow us and also leave a five-star review. I really appreciate your support. Thank you. This is Tools of the Podcast Trade, where you can learn about the tools and resources you can use to start and grow your podcast. Tune in this week as we talk about the help you need to remove the mystery from podcasting so you can become a successful podcaster that can reach your audience where they are. My guest today is Roy Collin. Thank you for coming and speaking to us today, Roy. I appreciate you. Thank you very much for having me on your show. Yes. So before we get into what you do, could you tell us who is Roy Cullen? Who is Roy? I suppose a serial entrepreneur. So I was kind of like from nine years of age going around, you know, washing cars and then doing newspapers at 11 with the money from the newspapers. I bought a lawnmower at 14, cutting grass and just all my life kind of being a serial entrepreneur, originally from Cork in Ireland and 16 years ago moved to a place called Wuch in Poland, which is right in the center of Poland. Used to be the second biggest city, he's now moved to the third. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you for sharing. All right. So what sparked your entrepreneurial spirit? I mean, most people are told, you know, most kids are told, do well in school, go to college, get a good job, marry and so <laughs> what got you into that? I'm not sure. I mean, it's like, because I've only one brother and he's not kind of like, he wasn't like that. I mean, he did the the paper round for a few years, but uh, that Mm -hmm. wasn't his thing. I mean, I went to college, so it's not as if I didn't want to. I actually wanted to drop out of school when I was 15, but my mom said, no, no, stay in school. And so I went to college, then construction economics and management, then worked with a company for about nine years and another so i did about 12 years working for two kind of big companies in in ireland Mm -hmm. construction companies and then kind of went to poland and just been an entrepreneur since oh okay now i'm gonna ask you this because it happened to me while you were working those nine years with all that knowledge and you know all the stuff bubbling up in you were you restless describe what that was like to you i think I was so busy at one stage because once I was working with the company, they threw me in the deep end. And then like at times I was working eight in the morning till 12 at night. And I think I kind of burnt myself up. So I didn't have time of thinking of something else. I was doing very well. I was paid very well because I was kind of getting a good salary, but also a bonus on profits. And I was good at what I'd done. So I was making good profits for the company. Yeah. But I, n- near kind of, I suppose the first one, I was like six or seven years in. I set up a website company then with a guy. And I was doing that. And when they found out, they didn't like that. So I was kind of pushed out the door because they could see that, yeah, I didn't want to be kind of staying there long term. Yeah, yeah. So even though you were too busy to think, you were still doing the entrepreneurial thing, right? Yeah, yeah, Yeah. exactly. Okay. All right. So why so many companies, though? What what is the thought behind starting 15 15 companies 15 companies in five it's actually more i was trying to write it uh, i think it's over it's over 17 i'm sure it could be 20 to be honest with you because you forget these things and it's like once a company's closed you just kind of move on you know it's like a relationship it's done we you know we kind of you know there's no point looking back in the rear view mirror we're moving forward I, i like i was always kind of looking for kind of tax optimization and so one was in Barrett's for a company that I was doing that I had a, co- a few companies in Ireland company in England a lot in Poland and now I have Estonian as well so the e-residency for that and the reason mm-hmm. that I think that's a very good model is there's no uh, corporation tax and it's basically like if you're leaving money there because in Poland you're paying it each month if you have profits and it's it's better not to be doing that. And then there's a double taxation uh-huh. agreement with Poland, with a lot of countries. So I like a lot of times people think an accountant has your back. And my experience with having a lot of accountants over the years in different parts of the world, they don't care. I think they're getting uh-huh. kickbacks, to be honest with you, from the actual revenue. Because anytime 
Like, for example, one, one time I was doing the properties in Poland, but I had a company in Ireland for it and a Polish company as well, just for different things I was doing. Uh-huh. And I got a tax bill. And I, when I was talking to the accountants, I said, can I do this? Can I do this? Can I? So I had bought a, a, a book called uh, Tax and Magic, and it was written by a guy from the revenue. And they said, yes, yes, yes. I ended up getting a tax rebate. Why an accountant doesn't come to you and give you that information? To start? And I've seen that in all the different countries. Mm-hmm. And it's like when I talk to other people as well, there's obviously a few accountants have your back, but I think nobody will actually respect your company as much as yourself. That's true. All right. So are you like a nomad capitalist then? No, no. I'm uh, <laughs> like, well, business wise, you, business wise, you could say that. Like, but uh, like, I'm I'm in in much in Poland for like 16 years. So okay. I kind of based where I'm, but what I'm doing is like. I done a lot of real estate, so I built houses, I built apartments, thirty apartments, and different things in Poland, and done mm-hmm. a lot of um, like renovations and things like that. But what I found is, I'm thinking long term that whatever happens, because this world has gone a bit crazy, if I need to move, so I've kind of stepped away from stuff that my businesses, I need to be here and everything, and I'm trying to get everything online. So if I feel like going to Spain, or like I went last year with my son to Estonia for a month. I was able to do a few things and just kind of work from there. And I think that kind of gives you a bit of safety as well. So you, you're not stuck in the, the location if, if you need to move. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I've been listening to um, Andrew Henderson. He's an American that has a YouTube channel called no, Nomad Capitalist. And he talked about buying real estate in different countries and, you know, establishing yourself go where you're treated best, that kind of thing. And this sounds a lot like what he teaches. Now, can you tell us, and I understand this is not tax, legal, or no kind of advice, just your opinion, um, which would you consider the best European country to start a business? It actually depends on the business. Okay. So, yeah, because like Ah. whether it's crypto or whatever, yeah. So you have to kind of know which is the best... And it's just a case of like there's companies that do this. You can always go away and talk to different companies, get a kind uh-huh. of discovery call with them and find out. But there's okay. a lot of kind of like Facebook groups and everything where you can write or even on LinkedIn and say, look, I'm thinking of doing this. And just ask people, there's plenty of business people yeah, with experience yeah. that they're happy to share and go yeah. do this. Don't Because do. I mean, like I've heard in the market, like Delaware, and I've heard of different things because of tax optimization reasons. You know, mm-hmm, people are mm-hmm. leaving California because they're paying so much to their yeah. So it's just a case of pay attention to it. Don't just say, I must pay X amount of tax. Right, you know, right. just like it's the money is better in your pocket. So don't be giving it away to them because they don't use it for the best <laughs> things. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. You're also a podcast coach as well as an entrepreneur. What has been your, you obviously know about podcasting and you have quite a few. We're going to talk about those in a bit. What has been your biggest challenge it? in podcasting, about podcasting and doing podcasting? And how did you overcome those challenges? So at the start, it was more kind of, it was never to be a business. It was kind of more to make change to humanity, to help people and Mm -hmm. do the right thing. And, but then I thought, okay, you have to pay for Zoom. You have to pay for Calendly. You have to pay for this. You have to pay for Mm -hmm. the platform. So it's like, this is adding up. So like that was one of the things that I was like, okay, I this isn't right. You're giving plenty of information. You're spending a yeah. lot of time researching a guest, and then you're editing it and posting it, and it's costing you money. So I like I kind of made a conscious decision. I need to change this. Uh-huh. And then like with regarding to the coaching, how I started the coaching is. I was doing a lot of Toastmasters, and I was teaching people in that. I was doing workshops and just lots of stuff that loads of people started from it so that was that was good i was yeah. happy i was actually helping a lot of people get there but then i found those people reaching out to me that kind of knew me yeah i wouldn't yeah. call them friends i'd say acquaintance and, yeah oh you're doing a so i was helping people like and they wouldn't even buy you a cup of tea kind of thing like and you, yeah. it's a lot of time to take a person <laughs> yeah. from the start like you can learn it online in in an hour if need be, but it's not going to be good. If you want to do this right, you uh-huh. need to understand the whole steps. And because, I mean, I've released over 1,200 episodes with all my podcasts at this day, so I kind of know what I'm doing, learned the yeah. mistakes, so I make sure that people don't do it. But I was like, I, people weren't respecting my time. 
So that's yeah. why I actually said, I'm going to start coaching for this. And straight away, people reached and I said, yeah, I've got a free webinar. If you want to go to that, but if you're interested and it started working and I, t- I said, OK, this is good. Yes, yes. <laughs> that is funny. Yeah, I was I've, I've been um, mentoring podcasters for like three years and I've never asked for a dime. And the moment I kind of pull away, I get yelled at. So <laughs> I understand that. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, right. don't, they, they don't appreciate the skill set mm-hmm. because it takes like it takes you you've learned a lot of things in the years that you're doing you realize yeah. that you do this the the marketing there's so much to it it's not yeah. hard but it's just a case of like what i've learned is a lot of times if you've a friend a doctor everybody goes to the doctor to get free advice from the doctor if they have a carpenter yeah. they expect him to do the work for the carpenter and it's something i don't do if i get someone to do it, i want to pay them and if they won't let me pay them i make sure i buy them a drink or i buy them take them for a meet or i do something i respect their actually and the reason that i use them is i know they're good but unfortunately yeah. there's a lot of people don't respect so you have to just kind of i think respect ourselves that we don't get used for the skill set that we've got yeah, yeah, uh, it's a good it's a good thing. When I when I started my first podcast, um, John Lee Dumas referred me to a podcast coach, and I was like, you know, I'm fulfilling my purpose. I want solo moms to you know tell their stories. And this coach asked me, so how much money do you want to make from this podcast of yours? I'm like, money. <laughs> Who want to make money from a podcast? This is my purpose. I told him, and he refused to work with me because of that. And I discovered in the six years ensuing that you need money to run a podcast, no matter what your reason for starting it, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So give an aspiring podcaster some tips and strategies they could use to start and grow their podcast. I suppose I'll kind of take you through a little journey from the start. One is try to get the domain name that people will remember because sometimes people try to be quirky with what they've got and it's like, will people remember it? So my ones are speaking podcast, meditation podcast, learn Polish podcast, the crypto podcast. They're easy to do and I've got the domain names for that. So that's the first thing I would say that when you're doing something, have it that people will remember it and that you've got the domain for it. The next thing is the graphic. A lot of people like when they're creating the graphic, they're looking at it on a big screen and they're going, oh, this looks actually very good. And they forget that when it's in the iTunes stores or the, the Spotify, it's a tiny little box. And it's like, look at, see what it looks like and then go through all the different ones and see what's what's sticking out to you, what colors, what not too much wording because a lot of people do that. And I'll give an example of mistakes that I made. For example, with the Polish one, I never thought that would be popular. I thought I was doing it more for me because I was trying to find the Polish podcast to learn for myself, but they were only scripted or they were only in Polish and that's not how I learned. So I said, okay, I'm going to create this. So I'm doing it with my ex-wife and because we've got a good relationship together and I just took a picture from a tripod and a crappy graphic and it was like number one in a lot of things it was ahead of duolingo it was ahead of bbc languages and a lot of different things and that's the screenshot that i've got with them so then eventually i went away and i got a professional pictures taking and done a good graphic so i would say from people at the start do a decent logo don't wing it and you can get people that will do it on Fiverr or Upwork and things like that. Not at massive prices or there's 99 designs and things like that. There's plenty of people that will do it at reasonable prices. But, you know, treat it like a business. It, not, it's, it's a slow burn. It's not something that you just kind of go, okay, I'm doing this and money will flow in. But it is possible because if, if you're doing uh, your own coaching or your own products or stuff like that, make sure you let people know because – they're listening to your podcast and a lot of people kind of do it at the end, try to do it midway or at the start so that people will be listening to it and always, always ask people to give you a voice, star rating, a review and a comment. I mean, I looked, I, I kind of lost count. I can see it because it depends where you're looking at from. So you see some countries, but I know that there was like over 1500 five star reviews on a lot of the ones that I've got. And it makes a difference because like, all of mine have been in the top 1% and I've got four to the top half percent. So I think the reviews help as well and asking people and just the equipment as well. Like, like I use um, an audio technics 2020 USB mic. It goes into the computer. A lot of people use the mixer, 
But unless you, I'm not technical, unless you understand that stuff, a lot of times people have crickling, there's an extra kind of connection to go wrong. So it's like, why have that? If the quality is good, you don't need it. But if you understand that, by all means, go ahead and get a you know better quality thing. Same with the camera, same with the lighting. I mean, I've got a ring light there. I've got a LED light there. So when you've got the good light and people see you better, same with kind of like what, what you see there now is a green screen because I usually use mine with... Um, with zoom and i've got I, I use a qr code so people can find me easy with a qr code before people would actually need a special app for qr codes now you just point the phone press the button and it brings you straight to all the links to all my but if i'm on a, another call i have like i do live calls for two hours and it's on Streamyard. i have a throw over it looks like a wall and i still have my books there to the side so just kind of making sure that you try to have the quality as, as good as possible. I use Audacity for editing and I just tell people it's easy. It's like Audacity is free and it's like a cut and paste thing. So you can do that. And I encourage people as well then, like some people say they just want to do the audio. I say that's grand, but you're missing out on a big audience. So I put it on BitChute. I put it on Rumble. I know there's 50 other platforms. I don't want to overwhelm myself. So I kind of stick to the ones that I see are working. I tried about 20 others and I could see it wasn't worth my while for the number of views that it was getting. So I kind of just look at, okay, this makes sense. And the same with like your RSS feed. There's a lot of platforms out there that you have to go in and manually do it. Like a lot, lot of the, the ones will kind of send it to Apple, Spotify and things like that. But there's a lot more out there and you have to manually do that. So it's a case of having the list of that and sending them to the different ones. And it's like, it's easy to do, but it's more, it's strange, but most people don't do it. So is that the reason that mine are up the top charts? Because I do all these little things. And one thing I would say is most people don't do it. Like they all want the magic sauce for marketing. And if they all think it's going to be a special thing, just do this. And you get a gazillion downloads. What I say is have a fantastic interview. That's the most important thing. Because if you've got a decent interview with good content, at least you have a chance that people will come back and they'll share it. And you have to, that has to be the priority. So basically serve those, serve your listeners, right? Exactly. No, it's like what I would say is I'm not technical. I can do it. Anyone can do it. And like when I'm going through it with, with clients, everybody has that kind of own speed. There's some people, they're like A-level, okay, let's get the logo, let's do this. And they'll want to compress it into two weeks. There's others that want to take their time and do it over two months. And I kind of, I work with both of them because I don't want anybody to not feel comfortable. You have to kind of go, this is the pace that I want. And once they do that, then they'll enjoy the process more. And then there's, you can look at different monetizations as well. You can reach out to people. And, you know, even if you have books and stuff like that, there's a lot of different things to be looking. And if you spend the time kind of researching or just following groups and pages and listening to podcasts like yours, you pick up tips from guests that come on. And that's how you actually just keep improving. So if you put the effort in to learn, you will keep getting better. But a lot of people, they just start it, they put their legs up and they just think, okay, it'll grow eventually. And unfortunately, that's not that's not how it works. Thank you. Thank you, Roy, for sharing so generously with us today. So what is Roy grateful for today? I'm just, I'm just kind of grateful. I live through life always enjoying what I do, always making sure I'm present in the moment. So, like, I love my coffee. You know, I make a coffee with lemon in the morning. I enjoy that. I enjoy preparing for podcasts. I enjoy, like, when I'm with my son, I'm with my son. And when I'm talking to my friends, I'm... So, I kind of live in the present moment. I never worry about kind of what's happening next week or whatever. Not that I don't plan or have goals for the year, but I'm always present in what I'm doing. I'm not living, I'm not living on the phone. I'm not distracted. I don't have notifications all the time. So, when I'm there, I'm there. Awesome. So tell our listeners how we can get in touch with you. So I've made it easy as everything that I have is on bio.link slash podcaster. And basically, even if there's like the, the course, there's like the webinar that you just you give in the details, you get a 30 minute webinar. So you'll see my style on that anyway, and you, you get it. So there's, there's no pushy sale or anything like that. And then people can book a discovery call. Everything is in that. And my five podcasts as well, they'll find all the links up bio.link forward slash podcaster. Thank you. And we'll put that link in the show notes. Any parting shots? If you're going to do podcasting, do it from the heart that it means something to you. 
Because if you do it from the heart and you know you're changing someone's life. So, for example, a lot of, a lot of people throw in the towel because they go, oh, I'm only getting five downloads and getting 10 downloads or whatever. I say, if you're in a room and say, say it's 20 downloads and 20 people turn up, you would be delighted. A lot of speakers would be happy for 20 people to be in a room. And if you come back next week and there's 18 of them, but there's two new people, so you've 20 again, it's all good. And you would speak. But for some reason, people look at the, the, the analytics and the numbers and they get kind of disheartened. But if with your conversation that you're having with people, if you change one person's life or you just help them and the message gets to them when, when they need it. And so, for example, when I was doing my uh, numbers, the very first speaking podcast was the first one. And I, I was about three weeks in before I hit 100. And I was going around to everyone. Did you listen to it yet? Did you listen to it yet? Then I got to like a thousand. That was a milestone. I remember when I got to a million with the different things, I went, eh. and now like the Polish one is over 2 million with the audio and the video. And it's like, it's good. I track everything and I'm watching it, but it's not about the numbers. It's all about just kind of, okay, this is growing, but I know I'm helping people and you just get message back. People kind of grateful. And when you're knowing that you're helping mankind. So I suggest to people that if you can do something that's going to help people, or if you have something that's annoying in the world, why not create something that makes change instead of expecting some politician or somebody to do it. Why not be you that makes the change? Well said. Thank you, Roy Collin, for coming and speaking to us today. I really appreciate you. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me on the show. Need a way to jumpstart your podcast? You ever need some traction? You know, sometimes it's not easy starting your own business and a podcast may be the first thing that appears in your mind when you want to really get your word out there on your business on whatever idea you're trying to build on. But starting a podcast requires a lot of resources, time, and effort. Now, with the Podcubator Accelerator Pro, this could help you. Now, this is a mentoring program that helps new and aspiring podcasters launch and grow their podcast. So what are you waiting for? Because 90% of podcasters fail after three episodes. Do you know why? Because they don't have the guidance and support So this is highly recommended that you try the Podcubator Accelerator Pro because you get one-on-one mentoring with a professional podcaster. You get monthly coaching sessions, you get exclusive access to online courses and tutorials, and even a private community of podcasters for networking and support. So what are you waiting for? Because you need to start your podcasting journey today. Hi, this is Jen. I'm really excited about Podcubator Accelerator Pro. So if you're interested, click the link below and book a one-on-one call with me, or you can fill out the application form to see if you're a great fit. So don't pod fade, get a mentor.